Now I want to talk about non-overt categories in the expert theory. My name is Bibi Dujat Moko from Sanata Dharma University, Yogyakarta. Let me start with the questions. This presentation tries to answer two questions. The first question is, what non-overt categories are present in English sentences? We have sentences like Linda wants to go to Bali. Here it's clear that the person who wants here is Linda. But who is the person who goes to Bali? Well, we also understand that the person who goes to Bali here or who will go to Bali here is also Linda. So Linda here is the person who has the want over here and also the person who will go to Bali. We also have a sentence, what time do you think they will come? What time here is produced from somewhere over here? They will come at what time? And then it moves to this position. So there is a position over here which was formerly in the position of what time? And then the second question is, what characteristics do the non-offered categories have? Now, let me answer the questions by using the reflexive self. We have the sentence, I wanted you to buy in the bag for himself. Here we have himself. And we understand that duty here is a male. If duty is a female, then it's hard for us to understand the sentence because Himself here, the understanding of himself here depends on the noun phrase over here or the person over here. And then in the sentence, I wanted you to bind the back for herself. Again, our understanding of herself here depends on DT over here. Here we have herself, and therefore we understand that DT here is a female. So with the reflexive, we understand that the reference of the reflexive over here is the noun phrase or the person over here. And there must be a match in the gender over here. If we have a cell over here, then the person here should be a female. Then if we have himself over here, the person must be male. So if we have uh, this sentence, so we have this sentence, Jin wants T.T. to buy the bag for himself or herself. Then the sense means that Jane wants Titi to buy the bag for herself, in which Titi is a male, and then Jane wants Titi to buy a bag and the bag for Jane. Well, that's rather difficult. So what we can say is that once again that our understanding of himself or herself here depends on the noun on the person over here. If we have herself, then we understand that DT here is a DT here is a female. If we have himself, then DT here is a male. And then himself and herself here does not go beyond this construction. That the reference of himself and herself here is limited to DT to bind the bag for himself or herself or the understanding of himself or herself here is limited to the construction over here. So we can say that the reference of the reflexive self is in the construction which becomes the complement of the verb one. We cannot have himself and herself to refer to the person in the matrix clause or in the main clause. We can draw the structure of this sentence. I want you to buy the bag for himself or herself. Here, uh, the scope of himself or herself here is within the consideration of here. Did you want to buy, did you to buy the bag for himself or herself? I want, and this is the construction. We have a TP over here with an empty specifier and two over here. And DT is a specifier of buy and later it moves to this position. We have this construction. I want Titi to buy the bag for herself. We understand that Titi here is a female because of herself over here. And then the, this is the construction of I want. I is a specifier of the verb over here, one, and then it moves to this position, I, and then 
one is the head over here and it moves and moves with the T over here which is present and then the TP over here is like this we have a TP so DT originates or base generated as the specifier of by over here and then it moves to this position and then TD is because himself then DT here must be a uh, male if we have this one we have gen we have gen over here then this sentence does not mean to us on so this sentence is uh, is difficult to understand or is not understandable because we have gen is a female and we have himself over here gen to bind the bag for himself if we have gen then therefore it must be herself so once again the understanding of uh, reflexive depends on the construction within the tp over here what about if we have i want to bind the bag we have i want to bind the bag for herself is this sentence understandable i want to bind the bag for herself while the sentence is still difficult to understand or it's not understandable because because herself here does not have a reference it's uh, it's difficult to understand it's difficult to know who is meant by herself here because we don't have any reference if we don't have anything over here then uh, we need the reference uh, of herself over here and the reference over here is it must be a pro over here so a pro here is a pro form uh, a pro here is a pro here inherits the characteristics or the features of i over here pro here inherits the features of the specifier of the verb or of the tp over here so we have pro over here and if we have pro over here which inherits the characteristic on the features of i over here then we cannot say for ourselves it must be for myself and then we have for myself so what i want to say here is that we can only interpret the reflexive verb here in reference to the noun phrase over here or to the person over here if we have myself over here we have a pro which, which has the characteristics as the metric subject over here if we have herself then it must be a female over here so the reference is limited to this scope that we have chin over here as a reference so with i over here we must have a pro over here and pro here is the reference of myself so from the discussion of the reflexive over here we can say that in english we have pro a sentence may contain a pro as a specifier of a v the next we have np trace so when an np leaves it leaves a trace and then we have also wh trace and then we have mt category we'll talk about these four kinds of non overtake categories one by one the first is pro we have a sentence like i want jenny to bind the bag for herself so here we have herself which refers to jenny over here herself here is understood as a female because jenny over here if jenny is not a female then the sentence is not understandable then we can have the structure of the sentence jenny bind the bag for herself so the reference of herself over here is jenny over here which is female and then i want to bind the bag for myself we have myself over here but we don't have any noun over here as a reference of myself but in that case we have a pro so pro is here so pro here is a specifier of by which becomes the reference of myself and then we can say that pro is produced as a specifier of v which occurs in an embedded clause so pro here is a specifier of v the verb by which occurs in an embedded clause this is an embedded clause 
And then we have um, the reference of a self in number one is Chenny, which is produced as a specifier of V and moves to the specifier of T. So Chenny is a specifier of by and it moves to the specifier of two over here. And then the reference of myself in two is a pro, this is a pro, which is reduced as a specifier of V. And then pro inherits the features of its reference. So pro here has I as a reference, the NP which becomes a subject of the metric clause. This is the matrix clause. If we have he here, then pro inherits the characteristics on the features of he over here. He wants to buy the bag for himself. If we have she here, then, then pro inherits the features of she over here. The next non overt category is NP trace. We have the sentence like Mary can tense the Balinese tense well. This is the structure of Mary can tense the Balinese tense well. Mary here is produced as a specifier of dance and it moves to the specifier of T. And the movement over here leaves a trace which is co indexed with the moved element. So this is the NP trace and it is marked with T over here. And then we also have a sentence like John is angry with himself. This is the structure of John is angry with himself. We have John over here, which is in fact produced as a specifier of angry. We have John angry. So angry is the A over here. And John is produced as a specifier of angry over here. We have John angry. It's similar to John anger or his anger. If we have anger over here, then uh, the specifier can be his or John's. If we have angry, then the specifier is John. So John is produced as a specifier of angry. Then it moves to the specifier of the verb B. And then finally, it moves to the specifier of T. This is the subject position. These are the characteristics of NP trace. A moved NP leaves a trace T, which is co-indexed with the NP. So Mary here leaves a trace uh, over here, and it is co-indexed with the Mary over here. And then trace T is governed by the move NP. So the so T here is governed by the moved NP over here. We'll need to talk about the theory of government binding later in our discussion. Then the third characteristic is that NP movement is cyclic. Like here we have uh, John. It does not move in a single jump from the specifier of A, but it, it moves cyclically to the position of the specifier of V first, and then it moves to the specifier of T over here. So then we have the WH trace. We have the sentence, what will you write for your final paper? This is the structure of the sentence, what will you write for your final paper? The question word here is produced as the complement of write. So from this position, what moves to this position? And the movement over here leaves a trace T, which is co-indexed with the moved element. This is the movement. So from this position, it moves to this position. The next example is who do you think Jin loves? This is a structure of who do you think Jin loves? We have several movements over here, and the first is the movement of you from the specifier of thing, then the movement of do from the T position over here, then we also have the movement of chin from the specifier of love, and then we have the movement of love from the position over here to the position of T over here, it matches with the S. And then we have the movement of who over here. So who and who do you think Jin loves is produced in this position. Let me show the movement. This is the position of T. 
and it moves to this position and then from this position it moves to this position so every movement here leaves a trace this is a trace of who which moves to the specifier of c another example is i know who jane loves so who here is produced as the complement of love and then it moves to the specifier of c over here it does not move to the specifier of c over here because this is not a question it's still within the lower cp over here although it's not a question the wh phrase should move to the specifier of c so what we can say about the wh trace the first when a wh phrase moves it leaves a trace which cannot be occupied by another element we have what will you write in this aspect for your final paper so what over here moves from the complement position of right so we cannot fill in with the the complement position of right cannot be occupied by another np over here if we say like that then the sentence is not acceptable so when a w trace move then it leaves a trace and the trace cannot be occupied by another element what will you write in this aspect for your final paper is not acceptable because the trace is because the position of the component of right is occupied or is filled with uh, another np over here and then we also have a sentence who do you think jen loves bobby who here is generated as the complement of love and therefore when it moves it leaves a trace and we cannot fill the position of the complement of love with another np over here if we do that then the result is that we have unacceptable sentence i know who jin loves this sentence is acceptable because the trace of who which is in the complement position of the verb love is still left empty and it just moves to this position but the trace is not occupied or is not filled with another np so now we can identify the characteristics of wh trace the first wh phrase moves to the spec of c in english it moves to the specifier position in english and then wh phrase leaves a trace which is co-indexed with the wh phrase and then the movement may occur within a cp or from a lower cp embedded clause to a higher cp so here, the movement over here, what will you write for your final paper, occurs within a CP. And then the movement uh, for the correct sentence, uh, and then the movement in the correct sentence, who do you think Chen loves? The movement occurs from the lower CP to the higher CP or to the matrix clause over here. This is a long distance movement from the lower CP to the higher or to the matrix CP over here. The next WH phrase movement is cyclic. In a sentence like this, the movement does not jump from the position of, from the complement position of love, but it moves to this position first. Who do you think? And then finally, it moves to this position. If we don't have Bobby here, then this movement is from here to this position, and then finally to this position. The next we have the fourth category, namely the empty category. We have John is angry with himself. Here we have the movement of John from this position, and then it moves uh, to the position of the specifier of B over here. And finally, we have the, it moves to the position of the specifier of ES or T over here. We have several empty categories here. The specifier of C is empty. The C position is also empty. The specifier of T is empty over here. And the specifier of B here is also empty. 
So in a sentence, there are several positions which are empty, but the empty positions are needed for the lending side of a moved element. Like the specified position of T over here, this is empty, but this is needed for the lending side of John to form a grammatically or syntactically acceptable sentence. We can identify the characteristics of empty category. The first, the specifier of C and the C in the matrix clause and the specifier of T are empty, it is marked. Although they are empty, we cannot ignore them because they needed to form an acceptable sentence. Like the specifier of C is needed from the lending side of WH phrase. The C position is needed from the lending side of a model or auxiliary verb in a question. And the specifier of T is the lending side of the NP subject. Then the next, the C or the complementizer of an embedded clause can be empty or filled. We have a sentence like, I believe that John is honest. If we have that, then the C here is filled with that. But if we just say, I believe John is honest, then we have an empty C over here. Then the next, the specifier of the verbs be, seem, and several other verbs which do not have a meaning. So we have be like here. Be here does not have a meaning and therefore the specifier is empty. So a verb which does not have a meaning like be has an empty specifier position. John here is not produced as a specifier of be, but is produced as a specifier of the objective honors. Now let's continue. We can now summarize the non offered categories in English. The first is pro, which is semantically selected. So pro is semantically selected. If we have I want to go, then pro here has the characteristics or has the feature uh, which matches with the features of the verb go. If we have he wants to eat, then the pro in the sentence matches the features of it. And then the next we have mp trace. mp trace is a result of a movement. So because an mp moves to a subject position, then it leaves a trace. We have wh trace, which is the result of the movement of a wh phrase to make a question. And then we have empty category. We have several empty categories. The specifier of C, the matrix C on the main clause, like in I believe that. So I believe is the matrix clause. And so I believe is the matrix is the matrix clause. And then the specifier of T. And then the specifier of a dummy verb, those, those positions are always empty. Well, that's all. Thank you very much. And in my next talk, I will talk about passive voice in the expert theory. Thank you very much.